Welcome to another special episode of Chloe and the Professor. Today, we're connected live to the Super Gamer Geek University where a special debate is being held. Today's debate concerns digital rights management and whether it is good or bad for the gaming industry. It looks like they're starting. Let's switch to the live feed. Hello, I'm Chloe Nightshade, and my stance is that DRM is bad for the gaming industry. My name is Scott Freeman, and I believe DRM is necessary for the gaming industry. DRM does nothing to prevent piracy. I disagree, I think it's been very effective. Unfortunately, Statistics prove that wrong. In fact, DRM has historically been a source of frustration for legitimate gamers than it has been a deterrent against piracy. Do you have any proof to support that statement? Yes, a great deal actually. DRM isn't new, it dates back to the 1980s. Many copy protection methods prevented people from making backup copies of software and games on fragile floppy disk media. This is a practice that is still protected by U.S. copyright law today, but is often violated without legal consequences for the copyright holder. But, the DMCA makes breaking DRM illegal. It does, and that is one of many examples where the DMCA contradicts existing copyright law. Actually, no, the DMCA overrides existing copyright law. A lot of people make that mistake. The DMCA doesn't appeal existing copyright laws. It was created in haste, wasn't well thought out, and has caused more problems than it was meant to solve. But, companies have a legal right to protect their intellectual property. You are right, however the rights of a corporation should never limit or restrict the rights of individuals. That isn't democracy, or even capitalism, it is the very definition of fascism. We're getting off track. Do you have any proof that DRM is bad for the gaming industry? Yes, I do. During the war in Iraq, our soldiers in uniform wanted to relax and play some games during their downtime. These were Ubisoft titles which featured a DRM scheme that required the computer to be connected to the internet at all times. However, that wasn't possible where they were stationed, and often the games wouldn't work. Back home, a patriotic movement in support of our troops in Iraq was at its height. This incident was a huge PR disaster for Ubisoft, and many of their games featuring the always-on DRM consistently got poor scores. So is that your only proof? I wish it were, but I have more. Secure ROM is still a widely used copy protection scheme, which often conflicts with legitimate seeding DVD burning software. It was also incompatible with many seeding DVD drives. The biggest defender was Starforce. This form of GRM was very intrusive. It installed a rootkit into the Windows operating system which compromised system security and stability. It was also known to cause computers to suddenly reboot without any warning, even when unauthorized copying wasn't being attempted. Eventually, Due to growing legal concerns, Starforce was abandoned by most of the gaming industry. What legal concerns? Around the same time, a rise in cybercrime and dangerous malware drew the attention of the Department of Homeland Security. What ultimately sealed the fate of Starforce was when Homeland Security began looking into a similar kind of GRM Sony used on music CDs. It used a rootkit and has software that can hide files from the operating system in antivirus and anti-malware programs. This raised serious national security concerns, because these technologies could easily be used to create very dangerous viruses and trojans. Because using such DRM could open them up to very serious legal problems, these copy protection technologies were abandoned by the gaming industry. That's understandable, but it still doesn't change the fact that companies have the right to protect their intellectual property. Again, you are correct. However, if it is at the expense of individual rights then it is technically not legal, and certainly not ethical. Let us also look at a more recent example, SimCity. 
because of its always on DRM players were not able to play the game for many weeks, while pirates who circumvented the copy protection were able to play the game. There was also the case of several games limiting the number of times you could reinstall it even on the same computer. Bioshock used this, and to go over that limit you had to call a phone number in the manual, which was the wrong number. And, that is the main issue. DRM is consistently being circumvented, while false positives still often plague legitimate users. Then are companies supposed to protect their copyrights? The most effective methods are education, transparency, and increasing availability without artificial scarcity. But, how would any of it help? First point, education. Explain to people how piracy negatively impacts the gaming industry, without talking down to them, using threatening language, or treating them like potential criminals. Second point, transparency. Be open with your fans. Connect with them and get them involved in the development process in a way that adds value to the project. Like what, for instance? Update your fan community on every aspect of the development process on a regular basis, and take their feedback seriously. Hold frequent polls to gauge how favorably the fans feel about the project and the direction it is going. Also, suggest new features and let the fans decide which ones get the most development time. But, how would that stop piracy? Simple. If you get the fan community involved it makes them feel like they have a stake in the project, which gives them a greater incentive to buy the game rather than download an illegal copy. Third point, no artificial scarcity. What is artificial scarcity? Whenever the sale of a product like a video game, movie, or music is limited by things like geographic location and or platform. These take the form of regional licensing and region locks. In an ever-increasingly global marketplace, such restrictions make less and less sense. What people don't get is that these practices encourage piracy. I don't get it. How do they encourage piracy? Hypothetically, let's say there is this great video game you want to buy. It isn't for sale in this country, but you want to buy it. And, let's say that you do find a way to import the game, but when you try to play it you discover that it is region locked. That causes a game to lose its value. You paid good money for something that is worthless. A game studio that doesn't sell a game in a region where there is demand for it is losing sales. Just not getting the game you want and are willing to pay for isn't acceptable. Often, this leads many to no other recourse but to download an illegal copy. But, why couldn't they just write the game studio and ask them to sell it in the region? Unfortunately, that doesn't always work, and when it does it often requires a monumental effort by the gaming community to make it happen. It shouldn't have to be, that way, not with our current global market. I see. So, based on what you're saying, DRM is bad for the gaming industry because it's harmful for consumers, has no real impact on piracy, and their current practice of regional licensing restrictions limits potential income. You also mentioned platform, could you elaborate on that? Yes, that affects movies more so than video games which are often developed for one specific hardware platform. Though, recent developments are increasingly making that an important issue. But, when it comes to movies restricting people to watching them on just one specific platform only encourages piracy, whether they like it or not. Restrictions like allowing a movie to be watched on a TV, but not on a handheld device via the same streaming service. Also, preventing Linux and other alternative operating system users from enjoying DVD and Blu-ray movies. This is a level of consumer control that has never worked, and will never work. Game studios, movie studios, recording studios, and etc. are only hurting themselves with these practices. In a changing market, they are desperately trying to hold on to old outdated business models that simply don't work anymore in our global economy. The DMCA is an example where they took it too far, and tried to control consumers using legislation. This has also failed, and ultimately has done harm to the economy as a result. So, this goes way beyond just DRM, but how companies actually sell and license their products in a global market where national borders no longer make sense. Also, you could lump SOPA, PIPA, and the TPP into this as well. 
Exactly. Now you understand. Simply amazing. Chloe completely dominated tonight's debate. She absolutely did. We hope this was all very informative and helped to open a few eyes. If you have comments, questions, or suggestions for future show topics, please post them in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.